Hey, everybody. Welcome to the live podcast today. I'm Lee, and we are going to get started in just a minute, doing things a little bit differently today. Um, let's see here. Get everything set up. We are going to uh, have the podcast be a little less formal than than normal, a little bit more like our Hangouts today. We're going to involve the chat a lot more and um, going to get right into it in a minute. Uh, and once we get started, we'll be just going back and forth with the chat and kind of bringing what was really good from our Hangouts and then into a little bit more structured with the uh, with the podcast. And um, I hope you enjoy it today. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute here as I'm getting everything set up. We're talking about recording today, by the way, uh, which was a topic over, what was it, yesterday, I think it was. And we, we hit on a few things, and um, we're going to make sure that someone who is wanting to get into recording knows what they're getting into, some tips uh, to help them. Uh, actually, let's check the chat before we get get into everything right now. Okay. So Evan's here, Brennan, uh, Kevin, Dean's here, Chris is here, Coke's here. Hope everybody's doing good. Um, and let's see. I'm going to scroll back just a little bit make sure I got everybody. Yeah, I think I got everybody today. We've got people still coming in as as uh, as we get started. And um, I'm going to head get right into it. In fact, you know what? I think I'm just going to keep the chat window up while we do this today. We're going to make it a lot of fun for this. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Have you thought about getting into recording but were unsure about where to start? Today, I go over the first steps, the gear you need, and some tips to get you started recording without stress or any confusion. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome, friends, to episode 134 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show to help you become the guitarist you always wanted to be. Well, things are changing. A lot of the things we're used to, um, they're not part of our lives at this point. Uh, we don't really know what the future gonna ho it holds, but we hope that at some point we can get back to having fun and, in our case, out playing music. Playing live has been the big goal of a lot of guitar players in this community. But that's been taken off the table a bit, and we don't know when it's going to realistically return. Uh, that fact has turned a lot of eyes in a different direction. Uh, a lot of people are getting interested in recording and having that as an outlet for creativity and also for like a you know a big goal to to look forward to t t today i'm presenting recording to guitar players uh in specifically thinking of a player who would like to get their feet wet with recording their own songs but they don't know how i'm going to present the first steps to take uh the gear you'll need and very valuable tips to smash the learning curve and save you a ton of time and frustration. And we're also going to include the chat today. Make sure that um, if you're uh, here on Mondays at 4 p.m., you can um, send in any questions that you want, and we'll get to them during the show as well. This is going to be a little bit more like our Hangouts, since so I'm really excited about trying this out today. Uh, and we've got a really good group in the chat right now. Uh, so let's talk about our first topic, and that's what are the first steps you take? What are you going to do if you've made that decision, I really want to get into recording, but I don't know how? Well, the very first thing, in my opinion, is to start with the end in mind. What do you want to get <clears throat> out of recording? 
why would you do something like this? What what it is what is it that you want? Uh, is it just something cool? It looks cool. It's just something you always wanted to try, or is it you would like to have a recording of your your guitar playing, or maybe some songs that you, that you have? Uh, you like to share it with somebody, or maybe just keep a record of how you sounded at a certain time, or it could be you'd like to record a band, or maybe get into songwriting, working on songs yourself. And the ultimate goal would be to create songs for others to listen to, to share out there in the world. And each one of those levels is a, a different level of recording, especially for the, the gear that you're gonna use, the time you're gonna put into, and the money you're gonna put into this. Uh, luckily, uh, it's getting cheaper and cheaper to get into recording now. And, and that uh, easy entry point into recording has a lot of people running <laughs> head first into it and then realizing there's a lot of things that we have to deal with. Uh, we're going to hit every single one of those as we go here. Uh, so let's talk about it. just uh, if you just want some clips of your playing, you just want to keep a record of, of what's going on. What's the first step to, to do? Um, that's your phone. We're going to use our phone. Uh, it's going to be good enough for that. Uh, the microphones on a lot of the newer phones are very, very good. And if it's an acoustic guitar, or even if it's an electric an amp, if you're farther away from the amp, you don't want to put it right up on the speaker. But if you're farther away from the amp, you'll get a really nice sound. I use this all the time. I actually use a Zoom uh, H1 as well because sometimes I don't have my phone with me where I practice, but I, I keep a portable recorder there. Uh, just hit record, put an idea down, and then I'm good to go. So that's that's kind of the, the um, baby steps, getting into recording. Uh, and what would you use for that? You could just use the voice recorder app on your phone. Just because it's a voice recorder app doesn't mean the quality isn't there. Quality is the same as any app that you would use on your on your phone. How about getting some rough drafts? How about working on songs for yourself? There is where uh, you may want to move away from the phone. Now there are apps, there are recording, multi-track recording apps for tablets and phone. In my opinion, they're not really there yet. They, they, you get a little bit more frustrated with those. Uh, getting your laptop, getting a computer, getting yourself set up for that, that would be the first step. If you just want to rough out some songs, rough out some ideas, that's when you're gonna to want to use some free software, so some really great software that doesn't cost anything, and you could play your ideas into it, try out different you know, bass lines or drums or any of those things, uh, and get your ideas there. That's the, the next level, but that requires something else. That requires you getting your guitar into the computer. And that's where we, <laughs> that's the, 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 um, the drop off point. That's where we're going to really start having some issues that we have to deal with uh, that's different than just the old time uh, cassette recorders. And we'll get into all that in just a minute. Uh, and then the next is that the highest level is creating songs that you want to put out there for others to use. Uh, and that requires a, a really, really, really um, big learning curve. You're going to have to spend a lot of time learning the audio software that you use, understanding the, the, a lot about recording, understanding your uh, digital audio workstation. We're going to have a whole section on that today. And um, you may want to spend a little bit of money getting the sounds that you want. You may not be able to... Um, with the equipment that you have, get the clearest audio that you want. So there could be a little bit of money involved. Although what we're gonna find out later on today is there's a lot of software that's available for free that can get you really, really good results. And um, so that's where we're headed now. That's kind of the overview of uh, what we're gonna be doing this hour. And we're going to uh, jump into 
The second point, which is don't spend a lot of money on the very first thing you look at. I find that's the big pitfall when people are starting to get into recording. They they type into Google uh, guitar recording, what do I need? Audio interfaces. And audio interfaces can go astronomical. Uh, and sometimes you can get something that if uh, actually my interface that I have right now is a full out mixer. And if I had bought this <laughs> when I was first getting into recording into the computer, uh, it would have took years for me to figure out how to use it. Now at this point, I've used this stuff enough. I understand how to use this and it's, it's not a big deal, but it was definitely not an entry point. So you don't want to buy something that's going to take up a lot of your time. You want something easy to use that's inexpensive. And we'll talk about those too. Um, also with microphones, you can get very inexpensive microphones. We're gonna, and I'll have a few examples of those that all have fantastic quality. It's not like it used to be where the uh, cheaper equipment is going to have a really terrible sounding audio to it. You can get cheaper sounding equipment that sounds fantastic now. It's, this is the golden age of recording. You hear that from a, um, a lot of different places. People, are, uh, people have access to things they never did before. And with that, you need a lot of knowledge to work on these things too, but it's a, it's a really fun time. Uh, th the next thing th after you've taken the first steps, um, figured out why you want to do, do this, um, realize that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get started with this. Uh, you need to find a, a place to set up. You need to find a place where you're not distracted. And you need to find a place where you're not distracting other people as well. That's that's huge. If you are, you know, recording a lot of times, it, it, even if you're songwriting or just coming up with ideas, and there's a lot of commotion around, you're not going to be able to think straight. Um, also, if every time you go to record, it's bothering other people in in your house. Uh, if you're bothering other people it's going to have a negative um, reaction to others and to yourself. You're going to feel like, I really want to do this, but it's uh, it's going to be a big hassle <laughs> to get all this done and keep everybody else happy. So finding a dedicated space to record is, is, is huge. Uh, and if you don't have one, it actually you know, with a laptop and a small audio interface, you can try lots of different places uh, around your house uh, and find a, a, a good space that works really well, that, that, that you don't have a lot of, um, you know, if you're near the kitchen, refrigerator sounds, all of those little sounds tend to get in the, into your microphones. Um, so, so finding a space. And the last step of the first four steps before you get into this is you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get your guitar into the computer. So if you have been playing guitar for a long time and you may have a really cool collection of amplifiers and gear and, th and that's what you want to play through, you have a great collection of amps and you, loudness isn't an issue. Maybe you have a... Um, you know, a, a practice room or something like that where you can turn up a little bit, then you're going to be dealing with microphones. And that's going to be the first uh, uh, trial and error part of this process, finding the microphones that work well with your equipment. And there's a ton of microphones. They're not cheap, but some are. And I'm going to tell you the cheap ones that will that you can get you into this on your first step where you're not spending tons of money it's a little bit of money but not tons of money and then you know you're good to go uh, but if you're how about the other side of this what if you'd like to record quietly maybe just wearing headphones and you don't have tons of amps you don't have tons of gear but you'd like to get those sounds and then what do you do well there's 
ways that you can plug your guitar straight from the guitar into an audio interface that goes directly into your computer and then the computer can add those amped up sounds for you um, in the box and everything is through headphones so the only thing that people around the house are going to hear is the the plinking of an unplugged in guitar uh, and so there you go and also for acoustic guitars if you want to track acoustic guitars there are uh, there's usually you're going to want to use a microphone and certain type of microphones work better for that than others so figuring out how you're going to get your guitar into the computer uh, what you're going to need for that and having that figured out in the beginning uh, it's going to shape our direction as we go so I'm going to go over to the chat I've seen a whole lot of stuff going on in the chat talking about recording uh, before we get into exactly what we're going to need uh, so let's go over and see what we've got here uh, Chris says I used to have a zoom uh, MRS 1044 which was like a portable studio with programmable drums built in that's awesome it's back in 2005 I had a guess I, I haven't played that but there was a lot of really neat but um, dedicated recorders I don't know how much th those are still being uh, produced right now but there was a lot of really neat dedicated recorders that were all digital and gave you your wave files that you need to to you know take it into the computer but also had a lot of onboard effects and those things really really neat stuff uh, so let's see here and Chris says done a little using the computer mixed craft I think but not much uh, and Evan says that's where it's at recording can really help you turn ideas into songs and uh, let's see here Kevin says I have a headphone audio out on my um, black star fly I wonder if I could use that as an audio interface so I can use GarageBand on my Mac a lot of uh, a lot of amplifiers now I know that the the spark that a lot of our members of our community are waiting on <laughs> to get there um, but a lot of amplifiers smaller amplifiers they'll have a USB out and some of them will have a back and forth so you can actually bring things back into the amp to listen from the computer and also bring your guitar signal into the amp and record that using a DAW digital audio workstation which we're going to talk about in a minute um, let's see here Chris says I used to have a Tascam cassette four track we I think we all did <laughs> loan it to a friend and never saw it again it was fun using that uh, with the hiss the authentic white background noise sounds that's right and Brennan asked uh, Kevin he says does it have USB Kevin if so you might be able to go into your Mac over USB my amp has a USB out so I can use it like an audio interface yeah so that's that's where you're gonna find that if you've got a USB out in your amplifier uh, you can plug that right into your computer and at least get your guitar in maybe not get a microphone in and we're gonna talk about why that's important in just a few minutes so let's go ahead here talk about what we're gonna need to get started if you're the guy at home or the girl at home and you've got your guitar and you're having fun playing and you want to start getting into recording uh, here's a good way to start uh, first we have some assumptions uh, the first assumption is that you have your instrument so you have a way of, of playing your guitar in the way that you would like for it to sound and the second one is that you have a computer uh, recording audio is not the same as, as uh, video editing on a computer uh, recording audio on a computer is not as taxing and you don't need the best computer out there you don't need a great computer to get into audio recording and in most of the software packages that you can use there is you can set the amount of latency how long it takes a buff actually the buffering that will uh, give the computer time to process the information so even though you're playing along with your song that you're recording um, the the computer's giving itself time to uh, to process your 
your um, your instrument and also it still syncs up exactly when you recorded it so you don't have to run out and buy an incredibly fancy computer uh, a regular you know business laptop desktop will work just fine with most of these programs uh, okay so let's talk about the guitar interface how you get your guitar into the computer or a microphone into the computer this is usually going to be through a USB port uh, into the back of your computer or the side if you have a laptop and it's not you don't need to have uh, USB 3.0 3.1 it doesn't have to be an incredibly fast USB connection it can be the old standard USB 2.0 it is more than fine for audio recording uh, I used Firewire for a long time and it was very fast and I used that because I was recording uh, two eight track interfaces at the same time so a lot of times I would be recording, recording drums along with the band and I needed something faster so I used Firewire but now I think Thunderbolt has taken over that for if you if you have a lot of ins and outs going on at the same time for what we're using a relatively inexpensive audio workstation that's USB 2.0 will be more than you need uh, for what we're for just taking our first steps into audio recording uh, uh, so another thing about an interface is you can have many channels or you can have just a few doesn't really matter at this point because most likely you're going to be layering everything uh, you're not going to have a room full of people at this first stage now you can but usually at this first stage and, and I can I'm I'm set up to do that right now no one's well I guess some people are getting together to record uh, but most of the time 99% of the time I could have got by with just one or two tracks uh, one for my my microphone and one for my guitar going straight in can't beat it you know it's it's everything that you need because we're going to be layering and we're going to talk about why uh, one of the things that you need to um, one of the tips before getting into recording that's going to allow us to layer uh, in, a little, in a little bit so uh, you can have many channels or just a few so we're going to be layering parts uh, a mic in input and instrument input and let's talk about some of the lower entry points into into audio so one of the first ways that people uh, would try to go is they would try to go in through the mic input on their computer now you can do that if you have a, an amplifier with like a headphone out or something like that but generally you're not going to get the, the best sound usually you want to be able to have some sort of a quarter inch in regular guitar in to an input uh, into an audio interface or a microphone uh, or actually both would be the best so I've looked here that the three that you see and they all are kind of separated by $50 uh, the first one the cheapest one that you see people use that get really good results from is the Behringer UM2 and that's I think going now for $48 uh, it's really inexpensive to 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 get that it has um, uh, real-time uh, uh, you can listen to yourself in real time before it goes to the computer which is important when we talk about latency in a few minutes uh, it's got to you've got both the XLR and the instrument input which is important uh, and it's fast and it sounds clear and clean uh, can't beat the preamps on it for $48 now the next step up for around hundred dollars would be the um, this is what our friend Evan uses uh, he uses the USB 96 it's PreSonus USB 96 that's going around like ninety nine hundred dollars at this point and unfortunately and I used that before I, I have been using PreSonus equipment for a long time um, and my uh, my old uh, US PreSonus USB 96 uh, broke I bought a new one I hadn't used it on my newer computer so I have two really um, 
powerful computers at this point. And even though both of those computers had USB 2.0 in them, it didn't work with those. Now it worked perfectly fine on my older laptop. So there's something about that that PreSonus hasn't uh, addressed yet. So hopefully they will, because I, I, I was actually in touch with their customer service, which was very nice and they were very helpful, but ultimately we weren't able to get it going and I ended up returning it. But uh, if you've got an older computer, the PreSonus USB 96 for $100 is, is fantastic. The preamps are great. Everything I do is uh, through the PreSonus preamps. So it's wonderful. Um, and then the next step up, and this is the one that is becoming more popular and more popular. It's the uh, Scarlet 2i2, and that is $150. It's the same idea as the PreSonus. Um, you've got two channels, and you can monitor uh, before it goes to the computer, which is important. And they're both small. You can put them in a backpack, take them with your laptop, and you can record on the road if you want to. Um, so those are the three that I would recommend. There's some cheaper ones that I'm not so sure about the quality uh, and definitely a lot more expensive from there. But on the low end for a first step into recording, uh, that's where we would go. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the chat for just a second. Uh, so Dean asks, would a desktop with a lot of memory or will a laptop with 16 megs work? 100%. Uh, 16 megs is is more than enough for audio. Now for video, and and you know, and that's actually pretty, you know, pretty up there for. It depends on your processor for video. But we're not doing video here. We're just doing audio, and both of those, a desktop with a lot of memory and a laptop with 16 megs, would work perfectly fine for audio. Um, Evan says I just upgraded my laptop to eight gigabit bits of RAM. Uh, I did both of my songs on an older laptop with four. Right. So this is a, it's a, it's a really nice thing. Uh, the, the being able to adjust the buffering. So if your computer takes a while to process all this stuff, if you can just set it, uh, so it gives itself time to do it and you can use older laptops, older computers. And I mean, I recorded a lot of stuff on an old Dell that I don't use anymore. It was, it, it, it's uh, been retired, uh, but I recorded full bands with, with that real time into it. And it was not a powerful, it was maybe at the, maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, I don't know, nine years ago, it was, it was great. It, it you know, wasn't all that, but it worked just fine. So, so the, and that's really nice about, about this step because video is a new thing and video is very intensive and that's why I have all of these. Um, I have a laptop and a desktop that are very powerful, uh, but I don't need them for audio. Uh, so let's see here. Kenneth Kenny says, I had a PreSonus and just upgraded to a Scarlet 4i4. Right, so the, it's, a, it's the same thing as 2i2, but it, you just have uh, four ins, four outs, and it's a little bit, you know, it, it's nice to have some extra inputs and outputs. Um, and Justin's rocking the focus, right? And, and, uh, Kevin says my cheap Rowan loop pedal has a USB. So worst case I could start uploading bits from that. Yeah, that's a workaround. Definitely a workaround. Uh, and the, the ditto has a USB, but that was for a different, yeah, you have to check out, um, uh, what you can do. I, 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 you know, some of the loop pedals you can take a uh, take them into a computer as like a uh, audio clip so i don't know that they would work as an interface where it would just be continually sending it to your computer uh, but that is something that you can i've seen that before where you can record a loop and then it takes it as like a wave file and puts it on your computer and then kenneth kenny says i've used acoustica mixed craft for years bought the first one for 29 dollars, and always upgraded to mixcraft 9 pro now love it and use it to en edit mp3s yeah and i'm going to be talking about i'm i'm in the same boat not that program but i'm in it in, in the same boat i've i've stuck with a certain um a certain program that we're going to go to in depth today and in some videos in the future uh that you probably heard me talk about before that um that i'm so used to working with and it's really fast for me uh that i'm going to recommend uh for people who don't have it uh 
and a workstation that um, they, they might want to try out. And uh, let's see here. Justin says, any suggestions getting a good recording of an overdriven guitar? My mic is right in front of an amp and amp tone sounds great, but the track is either too low on volume or over, over the gaining fuzzier thins. We're going to get to uh, recording your amps uh, in the third section today. So I'm going to save that question for then. Um, and if, and uh, just put it back in the chat when we get to that section in case I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to lose that question. Okay. So those are the, those are the things that um, you'll need. You need the interface uh, and what the next thing that you're going to need is a digital audio workstation. Now this is your recording software and you've seen them. They're set up like, uh, like a mixing board, a virtual mixing board and you have faders and depending on the, on the, on the program. And basically they, you, they will record. That's where you will press record. Then they will store the information that you have and they will mix it with other forms of audio and you can add effects to them. You can, you can do all sorts of different things. You can edit, take little parts out, um, speed things up, slow things down. There's a, there's a whole lot of different things that you can do with a digital audio workstation. It is the, the central core of your recording. Uh, and when you, it, the, people call it a DAW, you'll hear that a lot. And that's, that's what it means, <clears throat> digital audio workstation. And if you go online and look for some, you're going to find a lot of different ones and they all have these great features and they all look really nice. Uh, but I want to, this is the first secret that, <laughs> that uh, for someone new getting into recording is they all do pretty much the exact same thing. All of them. Okay. But what's the difference between them? Well, they all do that same thing in different ways. They, they, they go about it differently. So didn't used to be that way when I've been through the whole digital recording history. And at first you had programs that dealt more with MIDI recording and not digital recording. And then, um, you had programs that came in as MIDI and then switched over to digital. And, and usually those were on either side. And then as one program would find a feature, it was amazing. All the other programs would, would get that same feature about six months later. <laughs> you see where this is going. So they all kind of, I don't know if it's stealing from each other, but they're all competing with each other. So when we get to this point, 2020, during the pandemic at home, uh, you've got your choice of a lot of different software that all do the same thing. They just go about it in different ways. So the way that you would pick a, a DAW that would be right for you is really the user interface, H how they go about it, how, how it looks to you on the screen, how easy the menus are, how easy is it is to do things. Um, when you find on some you've tried and everyone's different because there, there could be one or two. I've tried a lot of them, one or two where it just wasn't intuitive for me the, the way that they worked. And I said, well, I'm going back to my, my old one. Uh, but for someone else that might make sense to them. So there isn't one that I'd say was hands down the best way to do it. They all do stuff differently. And we're going to go through a, a list of all of those and not, maybe not all of them, but a good bit of them in a minute. It's, but the user experience is really where you're going to see different, uh, different things. So, so let's talk about, um, what most people have already or what most people could get very easily a very easy way to get into a, a DAW and the first one is GarageBand so if you're an Apple user most likely even on the iPad I, I, I know because I've used that before or seen it before play with it before uh, you've got GarageBand which is amazing it's free it's <laughs> it's it's already built in. It's not, you know, it's not, um, 
fully functional. I think there's a limit on tracks. It doesn't do everything, but it does a ton. And I know there are people who record all sorts of things on GarageBand. A lot of podcasters use GarageBand to record their podcasts. There's nothing wrong with GarageBand. It's great. I think you've got some drums on there. Um, there's a lot of different things to do. It, it's it's free, not free. You paid for it, but it's it, you know it's it's in there with your um, with your your Apple products, and it can get you started. Uh, the other one that people tend to to when they dip their toes into the water of recording is audacity and usually that's over on the p although it works on everything um you know i think pc users because they don't have a garage band or something like that they'll, they'll go to audacity and audacity is a it's a multi-track uh digital audio workstation you can layer tracks but it's very limited and in fact you can't use uh midi and it doesn't you can't use virtual synths and you know drum pattern drum programs as far as i know now i haven't you haven't tried to use audacity with drum patterns but i read some people saying that you can't so i haven't tested that out myself but i do know that audacity is pretty limited and that's free so th those are our those are our kind of like entry level easier to use ones that are free uh but for if you don't have access to garage band you're going to need to go into more of the full featured DAW, uh, which is, and there's some free ones as well. So the next that you see a lot of people use is something called Reaper. And Reaper is a full featured DAW, and uh, I've used it off and on. I've tried it here or there, and it is free to use at first, although there is a, uh, a trial period and if you don't, I, I forget how much it is. It's not very much. I think it's $60. And if, if you don't pay that, you just get a nag screen at the beginning. But it still works. It never stops working. Um, so Reaper is something that you see a lot of people will use. And it will take all of the plugins and all of the cool, fancy stuff that you need uh, to get done. It does it in a different way. The user interface for me wasn't... Uh, it didn't work for me as well. It didn't make sense. And, and probably because I'm used to another one that makes sense for me, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and then, and before we go back to the, to the free one that I'm going to recommend, I just want to talk about some of the paid uh, digital audio workstation. You have Pro Tools, which is the industry standard, uh, which, you know, it, Early on, Pro Tools was it didn't really have a whole lot of MIDI and synth work that you could do. It was more, you know, just um, audio. And then over time, it incorporated all those things and caught up to everything else. And it's been in, it's been in the recording studio. So if you're out there going from recording studio to recording studio, there's Pro Tools. Uh, early on with Pro Tools, you had to buy the equipment to go along with the software. Uh, and now uh, it's not quite, I think they, there's a native version and there's also some packages where you can get, M, I think it's M-Audio, some smaller interfaces that work well uh, with it there. So if, you're in, if you are if you want to have the, the software that they're using in the recording studios, a lot of people will spend the money for Pro Tools. Uh, then you also have Ableton Live, um, Studio One. A lot of people have uh, a limited version of Studio One because it comes with the PreSonus um, uh, equipment so you get you get that for free when you get when you use that there's Cubase there's Logic they all do the same thing in different ways some of them are more for live performance and some of them are more set up for a recording studio but there's a whole bunch of them and they, they can cost a lot of money in some instances not so much but the one I would recommend is the one that Evan's talking about and it's called Cakewalk and he says, I really do like Cakewalk. It, it, it runs well and it does everything. And it comes with the plugins you need to get uh, great tones to, um, to master and it has virtual instruments in it. So virtual instruments. If you're the guy sitting in, or girl sitting at home and you want to get into recording and you want to record songs, the drums and bass are gonna be your first hurdle. Right, so that's what everyone, how do I get drums in there? And if you don't know a drummer and you don't understand how to mic a drum set, which is very involved, 
and you just want to have some drums on your on your parts, you're going to be thinking about virtual drum plugins, and these um, it's called a VST plugin, and these plugins they use it. Uh, they're called VST plugins. They do a lot of different things. We're going to get into those in a minute. I don't. I don't want. To, I'm getting off track there. So, um, so Cakewalk was a program. Uh, it was called um, Sonar. Is the last thing it was the, the name of it was called Cakewalk Sonar. But it, for years there was different uh, versions of Cakewalk software, and they started off as a MIDI program. They were doing uh, MIDI keyboard things, and then as everybody started becoming the same uh they were fully featured and i've been using cakewalk i don't can't i don't remember not using it it's been a long time i've been using them pr pretty much since the beginning and it was you know it was uh i got into it uh, a little bit more inexpensive because i didn't get the fully featured one and i would upgrade over time i've spent a lot of money with, with, on cakewalk products and was very happy with them. Got really good results. Recorded whole albums uh, with with uh, Cakewalks pro products. Uh, then they went out of business a few years ago. And then here's the the history goes. They were bought by Gibson, and Gibson was doing some some wacky things with buying other um, other businesses at the time, and they decided to make Cakewalk a subscription service. So you would pay once a month for cakewalk and I think everybody just decided no thing no we'll just keep our old one it works just fine um, and so anyway then Gibson was a I, did they declare bankruptcy or did or they were about to I don't know they had they got in trouble for all the crazy stuff they did and and stopped it just stopped it cold said we're done with this and it was done and so that means for me, no upgrades and, you know, and it, if it stopped working, I was done. So I thought, well, I guess I'll have to learn to use something else. And I tried, I kept going back to Cakewalk though. Uh, so, but now a company called Band Labs, um, Band Lab, excuse me, bought the rights to that. And Band Lab does some <clears throat> social music thing, sharing of music. There's a lot of different things that they do. And what they, as an incentive for people to use their services, or at least get to know their services, this actually isn't a, isn't a price. They bought the entire package and they're giving it away for free. So this is every single podcast you've heard me uh, on was recorded with Cakewalk. Uh, every one of my background tracks or music or the opening to the, to the uh, podcast was recorded on this software. It's fantastic software. Uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but still nothing compared to it. I think Evan uh, said this yesterday, uh, you know, it's still a lot easier than most of the other ones that are out there. And it's free. You just sign up for BandLab and it gives you a download link. Uh, it's fully functioning and, and it still includes a lot of the plugins. It re has some sense some studio instruments. It's got the, what's it, the Overloud TH3 uh, amp sim. So if you need to get guitar sounds, it's got some really good guitar sounds built in to it. Uh, it has the Sinitis Effect Suite, which is an older one that sounds fantastic. Uh, it's got a lim Boost 11 limiter in it for mastering. Uh, it also includes every track has all the Pro Channel models on them. So uh, which are really, really cool. It's got reverbs, got the uh, Breverb, and it's it's got a whole bunch of stuff still in it. It doesn't have everything it used to have because a lot of those were third-party software, but really, really worth it if you want to get into to this uh, to try out Cakewalk. And it's over at, Cake, it's if you just type in Cakewalk by BandLab, it'll take, and I'll have a link to it in, in the show notes as well. Okay, so the last thing well, not the last thing. One, the second to last thing that you would need to get into this is some plugins, depending on what you need. Um, VST plugins we talked about. They give you you can have reverb, compressor, synthesizers right in the box, samplers, mastering plugins. 
but the, but what we would probably use them for the most is for drums not being drummers or so well i know uh dino's a drummer <laughs> you know it's, uh, a few of us are drummers but to quickly have some drum beats going on there uh you would need some extra functionality uh and we have i have a free and a and two paid that i recommend and the free plugin that looks really cool it's called the mp nt mt excuse me mt power drum kit 2 uh, and it looks very similar to another drum plugin that i use uh, it looks very similar to easy drummer set up pretty much the same way i, I took a look at it today uh, it doesn't cost anything and what these do is they have all the sounds of of the drums built in and they have midi loops which is just player information kind of like a player the spool on a player piano you know it just tells you when something was hit and how loud it was hit and as that as you go on with that you can change the midi information from measure to measure to measure so you can create really interesting drum beats for a whole song and if you don't like it it's nothing just to go back and change things a little bit in fact if if uh you want to accent something you can move a hit on a on a symbol right where you need it to be so they're really interesting and if you don't like the sound of the drums you can keep all the playing information but still change the way the drums sound really interesting how this came about it used to be that we would use uh, audio loops and the problem with audio loops they, they would just record a drummer playing for two measures or so uh, is when you wanted to fit them to the beat of the song which is what we're going to get into into a minute in a minute or two um, and they would stretch and they wouldn't sound very good they would either sound um, kind of fuzzy sounding or like if they were compressed they would it, it just didn't sound natural so uh, so they changed it to this system of using MIDI information and having uh, the drum sounds separately just triggered from the MIDI information and it's, it's really good um, so MT power uh, drum kit 2 is the free version of this the paid versions these are the ones I use um, I use uh, easy drummer uh, it's by tune track and it and it is what it says it's really easy to get some ideas down quickly uh, they may or may not be the sounds that you that you want for the drums and they have a lot of different choices uh, but then the other one that I use, which usually ends up being the sounds that I that I, is Steven Slate drums, and that's the one that I I really love the sounds from. Although the interface, the one I use, I was using four. Uh, so there's a newer one. I think it's um, I think uh, five now or something. But uh, it's a little bit harder to use than Easy Drummer is. But the sounds are fantastic, and you have a lot of different sounds. And what happens is um, you just set up a different track uh, and it, it, this is a MIDI track and on that track you, as, you assign a synthesizer as the output on that track. It's really easy to do and you pick the beats that you want, you put them on the measures that you want, press play and then you're hearing them. Now you can layer over your guitar. And there's one more thing that you might need to get started with this. So, so far we have um, the interface. You can get one for $48, the Behringer. DAW, you can get that for free. So we're into this for $48. The VST plugins you can get for free. So we're still at $48. The last thing that you might want is a microphone. Now, if you're just plugging into the if all you care about is guitar and if you're just plugging into your audio interface and then you get all your guitar sounds inside the computer then you might not want a microphone but for most people this is going to be what you want here's why well you might want to record some vocals at some point that that's what you would normally think about for a microphone um, but you might want to record some acoustic guitar and layer that along with electric guitar or you know there's electric players still play a lot of acoustic guitar and 
what I found is that even though I have um, pickups for my acoustic guitar and I can plug straight in for recording, it never sounds quite as nice as a mic'd up uh, acoustic guitar. And also, another reason you might want a microphone is if you have a real amp that you want to get into your song. If you want to use your actual guitar equipment that you play out with, if you want to record that, you're going to need a microphone at some point. So we're going to start talking about the two different uh, types of microphones that you might need. So minimum at this point, we're at $48. Now we're going uh, to either a condenser microphone or a dynamic microphone, two different kinds. Uh, a condenser microphone is what you're listening to me talk through right now. Uh, it's, it's very bright. Uh, it records things as naturally as you would think they would sound. Uh, it's very sensitive. If you, um, I have a gate running on this, but you probably could hear the air conditioning. If I didn't have the gate, you might still be able to, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have my headphones up that loud, but, uh, it's, they're very sensitive and they, they sound great. And also the closer you get, they add a little low end the farther away. You don't, so you can get the, the room or you can adjust where you'd like them. They sound fantastic on vocals. They sound fantastic on acoustic guitars. Um, for an amplifier, the, the, the jury's still out on that. Uh, I, I see people mixing both mics and getting really nice sounds on, on, on speaker cabinets. Uh, and I, and if you needed to, if all you had was a condenser microphone, you could put that on a guitar cabinet, not right up on it though. They're a little sensitive. And if you're really cranking your amp, I don't know if it would stand up to that or not. Um, but the, a lot of, of an electric guitar, the super high highs, people say that when they hear super high highs on an electric guitar, they say it sounds fizzy. That's the word you hear all the time. Oh, it sounds too fizzy. And basically what we're used to hearing on electric guitars, um, is not, it is a limited range. It, it it's not the same, but it reminds me of a telephone, the old time telephones that you listen to. And th th there were, there weren't a lot of lows and there weren't a lot of highs. It was a lot of mid range, but the, the upper mids, highs, upper mids, uh, that's where a guitar really likes to sit and it goes down pretty low, but not super low, like a bass guitar. So, uh, when, when you've got a condenser mic on an, on an amplifier and that's all you're hearing, Sometimes it can sound a little fizzy, but um, when you mix them with the next type of microphone I'm going to talk about, uh, you get some interesting results. And the other microphone is called a dynamic microphone. So the condenser microphone we just talked about, that needs power. And you, you've seen probably on certain boards or on interfaces, it's a button that says phantom power. And you press that button and what happens is it sends the power that the microphone needs through the mic cord and powers the microphone. Um, a dynamic mic is different. It doesn't need power. It works all by itself. And uh, it's, it's a whole different sound. Most people have seen the most, uh, the one I recommend, the SM57, they used to use it for when the president would speak every every time the president would president would be outside uh it was uh just the sure sm57 uh it's the industry standard for recording guitars here's why you can put that microphone right up on a speaker and it doesn't matter how long the i mean how high you have your amplifier set uh, it's going to be able to handle it it handles very high sound pressure um, the other thing about it is it doesn't have super low lows and it has a bit of a bump in the, in the upper mid range. So it makes the guitar cut through a mix very easily helps with mixing. Uh, sometimes that I've, I've tried different microphones and spent a long time trying to adjust it so that everything sits nicely. Uh, but 
when you go back to that SM57 and you plug it in, sometimes you don't have to do anything. It's already got a nice EQ curve where you can hear the guitar very nicely and it doesn't get lost in the mix with everything else. So the SM57 being the standard for dynamic, if you're going to be recording your, um, your amplifier, that's the one to have and it's $99. So that's the end of our what you need just to get started. Most likely for $48 you can get started recording. Uh, plug your guitar straight in to your audio interface and get your sounds inside the computer for free and you're in good shape. Um, but if you want to have vocals, to get the condenser microphones I would recommend, uh, the one that I'm talking through now, it's the AT2020. Audio Technica, it's ninety nine dollars. Works great. Uh, it's it's uh, there's not a whole lot to say about it. Just you plug it in and it sounds really nice. Uh, there's also the Behringer B one. Uh, don't know how much that is, but it's 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 not very expensive. It's probably less than ninety nine dollars. Or maybe, no, actually, I think it's it's uh, one hundred and ten. I think I did look it up, look that up. So it's it's right around there. Uh, and then another one I have, which is the MXL mic. Um, it's called a V67G. And it's got a different sound. It's got a more of a smoother uh, sound to it. And it's only $74. And it looks cool. It's got gold hardware on it. And it's green. So it's cheap and it looks good. Uh, and I, I've used, used um, the Audio-Technica. I've used a lot of different MXL mics. They're made in China, they're not expensive, and they sound fantastic. And if you know what you're doing when you're mixing, uh, you, it, it sounds wonderful. Yeah, and that um, that uh, MXL, the V67G, sounds, sounds great on acoustic guitars too. And so Evan says, let's see here, he was saying the two types of mic, I have one of each. And he's got an MXL 770, which works pretty darn good. I haven't tried that one yet, but it was $76 with the shock mount included. And he's heard great things about the V67G. Yeah, it's not it's been around for a while. It's a it's a it's a decent mic. So there we are. Um most of those, all these mics here, are either a hundred dollars or seventy-five dollars if you go with the MXL, the Chinese one, and they sound fantastic and if you want to mic your amp $99 in fact a lot of times you can get them with the mic cord included so <laughs> you only have to buy the mic cord you know so, um, so so that's that's what we need to get started let's take a look over at some tips to make your experience easier getting into recording there's a couple things that you need to know that are going to happen that throw most people when they start to record. Uh, and I'll start from the easiest one and then I'll get to the most difficult one too. So the very first thing that people have a problem with when they first start to record is playing to a click. Playing to a metronome that's built in. So why is that important? Most people say, well, I've got, I play with feel. I don't, it doesn't make me feel good when I have to play to a click. I like to just feel the parts. And that's great. And if you're just recording yourself, turn that off. And if you've got good time, it'll come, it'll sound wonderful. But when you start to track other things along with your, your part that's not played to a click, it stops feeling so good. <laughs> it starts to become a mess, okay? And it's hard to go in and fix things if you have to fix, fix things later. Uh, it's very difficult. So to keep everyone in sync, all of these digital audio workstations, they have a click. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, syncing the parts, if you're gonna use the virtual drummer, or patterns or loops, they all are all synced to that click. Uh, it's really important and it doesn't take a lot 
to be able to play with feel and still play in time. Uh, that's something that once you get used to playing with the click, you, you start to be able to, if you wanted to have a lazier sound, you would play a little bit behind the click. But you have to know how to play on the click in the first place to be able to, to uh, mess with your rhythms a little bit. If you want to play ahead of the beat, sound like you're a little bit more excited, you play a little bit ahead of the click, right? So you can add different feels into playing on time. So one of my tips is, before you get started recording, is to start practicing, what am I gonna say, with the metronome, right? <laughs> Getting used to playing along with the metronome. Uh, it, it only feels sterile when you're first learning how to do it. Once you get used to playing to a metronome, to a click, to a certain time that's right perfectly on time, then you can start to mess with things and then you can start to really get different feels into there and still be on time too. So, um, and, and the next thing that you're going to find when you start to record is dealing with the latency. We talked about latency a little bit and what latency is, it's the time it takes for your computer to process the signal and then send it back to you. So say that you have your guitar and you're plugged into your audio interface and you've got uh, a program lined up that's got guitar amplifier sounds in it. If you, when you play them, your guitar goes in, the computer takes time to change your signal, to give, put those sounds on it and then send it back to you. It's, there's a delay. And it's really, 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 really hard to play guitar when it's coming back to you off time. It's very difficult to do. And so latency is a big deal. Now what most of these audio interfaces do is when you plug into them, they'll have something like a real time sound. So you hit a button or you turn a knob and it, and it plays back for you exactly what you're putting into the, the interface before it goes to the computer. So you can hear through your headphones when you're playing and if it's on time. Now it's not going to have those sounds that your computer is going to, going to do for it. Uh, if you have a really fast computer, the latency can get smaller and smaller and smaller and it can get to the point where it doesn't bother you so much so you can still hear what your guitar is supposed to sound like and it's and it's delayed in such a small amount that it's not it's not a bother but it's still got latency it still takes time to get into the computer and come back to you so you have to figure out what you want to do do you want to hear what your guitar sounds like clean while you play these things um, and then later on change it to sound like it has an amplifier on it or do you want to um, deal with the delay you know or spend a lot of money to get a computer that's very fast so the delay doesn't bother you very much so latency is a big issue when you get into computer recording uh, the next problem that happens all the time is people recording in the red <laughs> when you set your levels, right? So there's your computer and you're looking at the levels and it's showing you real time how hot your signal is and people put into the, you know, it's usually a big amount of green and then yellow and then a little bit of red at the top. And so most people, they put it right to the top of the yellow and then it goes into the red and that's way too hot. These, these computer programs sound best when you're about halfway up, when you're in the green and maybe if you at the loudest part, you go into the, into the yellow on the track. Um, so here's a couple of reasons why that would, that would be a problem. Uh, it might sound great on the one track, but when you start to mix them all together, it's going to be too hot. Um, you're going to have so much signal. You're going to be overloading your mixer and overloading your plugins. Uh, plugins worse work best also at a certain volume. So w when they're designing these guitar amplifiers or 
compressors or whatever it is that you're going to use to affect your sound in there, uh, right in the middle is usually where it sounds the best. If it's too hot, it's not going to have an optimum sound. So, so being, um, it's a natural thing for some reason people plug in and they want to turn it up and make sure it gets a really hot loud signal these things are going to even if your signal's low you're still going to get enough you'll have enough to work with you can boost it later on in the mix and the last thing that we're going to talk about today is we um the last thing that people have a problem with is once they get their song done once they're done with the They've got the drums the way they want it. They've got the bass the way they want it. They've got their guitar the way they want it. Maybe the vocals the way they want it. And everything's done. Then you have to mix it. <laughs> then you have to get everything together and make it sound good. Make it sound like a song. And there's, you know, that's not an easy thing to do. The, the, the process of mixing is really carving out spaces so that all instruments can be heard and you have different tools for that you have equal eq uh, you've got compression and you've got panning those are the three big tools that you have with mixing and being able to use those nice and and make the, the song sound a certain way uh i know we've all done it where we've who people who have been into recording before is you you're really excited about your song and then you go and you, you're tired, you mix it really quick, and then you want to go listen to it later on in the car or something like that. And it just doesn't, it doesn't keep up with the other songs that you're hearing. So, so that's going to be the next, the next tip is to start learning how to mix. Uh, start pay, listening to some videos or, 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 you know, just paying attention about mixing. If you're going to get into recording, mixing is the last step. And one of the final steps that you have that you'll find is once you get your mix sounding right out of your DAW, it's going to be at a lower volume than songs that you would hear on Spotify or on the radio or on the TV. They've all been pushed up super high. And how do you do that? Because if you just go and hit the output and push it all the way up, it doesn't work very well. It, it, it will distort and it, it's unmanageable. So bringing your sounds up to listenable levels is a part of something called mastering. And we talked this weekend about mastering. It's a, it's a, um, it was a different job back in the day when they were putting these things on vinyl, you know, uh, one guy or a few people did the mixing and then they sent it off to another person who got the volumes and the compressions and everything just right so that it would be the right level for putting on a vinyl disc and um we still are doing that today in fact we had a hard time with it for years they call it the loudness wars where people were just trying to make their songs louder and louder and louder and at some point we've run out of space and so you'd see some if you saw the waveform of a lot of uh, the the music actually really up to this day i think they're still dealing with that it's it, there's no there's no peaks and valleys. There's there's no dynamics in the music at all. It's just as loud as it can be before it distorts. Uh, so bringing your song up and making it um, competitive with other songs, it, meaning making it so that it's not distracting when you go from a professionally recorded song to your song. You know, it's they're in the same ballpark. Um, is another thing that you have to uh, learn how to do. Have to do a little bit of mastering to get your songs. Uh, to there and my tip for both of those for learning how to mix is always to go to the recording revolution.com with Graham Cochran very smart guy um, it's been teaching these things for a long time uh, and is uh, uh, you know I took recording before all the digital stuff I understood the the, the basics of recording uh, but he takes that and brings it all into the computer age. So a, a perfect person to go on if you're going to get into mixing to uh, go and take a look at his stuff or on YouTube at Recording Revolution or at his website. Okay. Um, I'm going to go and check the chat a little bit here. I want to thank, thank the chat for hanging out with me today and, and um, 
what was that question that I had missed a while ago that I wanted to get back to? Let's let me take a look here. I think it was Justin's question. Let me see if I can find it. Any suggestions getting a good recording of an overdriven guitar? My mic is right in front of the amp and the amp town so tone sounds great, but the track is either too low on volume or overly gainy, fuzzy, and thin. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing is you have to get your amp to a, a pretty decent level. Uh, if you're not pushing the speaker enough, you're gonna get kind of that thin, fuzzy, gainy sound. So it's gotta have a good level, that's the first thing. And then um, we talked about the types of mics. Uh, a condenser mic is gonna make, it'll make it brighter, which will sound thinner. And there's things you can do about that too, depending on what uh, mic you have. So Justin, in, in the chat, let me know what mic that you're using on that. Um, there's some things that you can do. First off is you can EQ the sound from your amp with the microphone, depending on where it is. So if you ever notice, if you look through the grill cloth on your speaker cabinet, and there's a cone right in the center of the speaker, a little circle right there. That's gonna be the brightest spot of your amplifier, of your, of your sound when it comes out of the amplifier. Um, so if you put your, your microphone directly in the center of the speaker, that's as bright as it's gonna sound. And it could sound gamey, fuzzy, and thin. As you move the mic towards the edge of the speaker cone, to the right or to the left, it, you will get less highs and more low end. So where you put your microphone on that speaker has a ton to do with what it sounds like when, you, when it hits the computer. So my, what I'm thinking about what you're saying is that you probably put that microphone right center of the, of the speaker. I would say, hey, why don't you try it back? Do it on the edge of the speaker. See what that sounds like. Okay. Um, uh, so the amp tone sounds great. The track is either too low on volume or overly gaining fuzzy thin. So if you've got good sound coming out of the, of the amp, and your 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 uh, microphone is in front of the speaker cabinet, within you know, either right up on it or within an inch or two, you should be getting good signal. So if it's too low, that could be the preamp on your audio interface needs to be turned up a little bit. Um, so you should be getting that. Uh, and what some people like to do is they like to back their microphone off maybe about a foot from the guitar. So you hear a little bit of the room. So you can kind of play with, it's almost like a natural reverb from the room that adds to the speaker. So if you want none of the room in there, you put the microphone directly on the speaker cabinet, right up on the grill. And if you, then you figure out, well, is it going to be too bright or not too bright? I'm going to make, take that microphone and move it off to the center, off center of the, of the, of, of the speaker. You can also angle the mic different directions too. It doesn't have to be pointing straight at the cabinet. You can hang, have it pointed off at an angle and that's gonna give you different sounds too. So there's gonna be a little bit of experimenting that you can do with that. Um, and let me go check the chat here. I'm using the Audex equivalent to an SM57. Yeah, okay, so then wh what I would do, um, is put that over off to the side of the speaker cone and record that and see if that gets rid of the fizzy, uh, fuzzy stuff and it makes it sound more like what you're hearing. Uh, and then if that's if it's still kind of like fuzzy sound or something like that's not tight the way that you hear it, back it off a little bit um, and maybe that might help too. So mic placement is everything. And if you've got something that's similar to an SM57, that should work and it should give you what you want. Um, just uh, experiment with uh, with that. Okay. Uh, Jake says, have you ever dealt with latency issues and do you know of any solutions to it? Yeah, I've done I've done several things. When 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 I'm when I'm recording lead guitar, um, 
I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear my clean guitar. So, so if I'm going straight into the box, straight into my audio interface with with no amp or no floorboard or any of those kind of things. So I'm just going straight into the into the computer, and I want the computer to make to give me a nice lead sound with some saturation delays and all those kind of things. I want to play and hear that. I don't want to play a plinky guitar when I'm playing a lead sound. It's just I. I I know I don't make the same choices uh, that I would if I heard a nice, um, smooth sound. So I've done a couple things. And a lot of these plugins um, will come with a a a, um, a version that's standalone. Okay, so I'm thinking like the Scuffum or like Pod Farm. These are the older ones, and so you it, you have two things. You've got the VST which which is plugs plugs into your recording software but it also has one where like say you don't want to do any recording you just want to play guitar has a standalone program and when that pops up usually the latency on those is really really low so what one one workaround that I did was I would plug into my audio inf- interface and I'd have both the standalone version and my uh, DAW up and I'd set my DAW to record just the clean guitar, but I'd mo- but I'd also have the standalone version of the plugin turned on. So that's giving me a, a pretty nice uh, sound uh, that's not that doesn't have a lot of latency on it. And I can tweak that sound, and then I could and then I would save it as a preset. So when I'm playing and I'm listening to it, this is the exact sound that I'm going to use, and I get it just right, and it's the latency is very good, um, much better than if I went into my DAW and there was a plug in there, and then it, it it slows it down, and then hit record. So when the when the um, when the the DAW is recording, it's only recording the clean guitar, but I'm not hearing it. When I'm playing, I'm hearing the the standalone versions uh, sounds nice. And then when you go back to mix it later or play it, I just put that plug in on that track, and then I find that preset that I found when I was tracking it and add that to it, and it should sound exactly the same. So that that's one workaround that I've had. Um, there, there's the um, Another workaround is getting a really fast computer, and at that point, um, most of the all of them they have a, a buffering slider, or you can set the buffering, so you can set how fast the DAW is is working. And what happens is, if you set the the uh, the DAW to work too fast for your computer, you'll hear a lot of crackles and pops, right? So everything's you're playing and it's like oh that's the it's working too hard for my computer I need to add add some buffering to that. Um, but if you're just tracking, you don't mind the crackles and pops. You can play and get and hear what it sounds like, and then later on uh, it'll still record it. Hopefully it would still record, and then you can adjust the the buffering later. You know, there's little workarounds like that. Um, you know, a lot of people will use outboard gear and record that, but also record a, a clean as well. So say that um, I've got this Pod HD 500X and I'm plugged into that. Um, I might, you might be able to get a pedal that splits before it would go in there. So like, um, let's see here, this, this, uh, this uh, stereo reverb. Uh, has two outputs. I put one output two. I could turn it off, not use that pedal, but oh, I would still have two outs coming out of it. One of them I would put through my sounds, and then the other one I would, I would, uh, I could put in clean and not monitor it, and just record that. And then later on, I could add sounds to it too. So fast computers probably the best way to do that if you really wanted to do monitoring and and not deal with latency. Um, but that little trick I did with when you have the standalone version of the plugin and also recording at the same time too, that would that really helped. That that helped. I got through d- several things doing that way. So 
So Jake, I hope that helped. Uh, Gloria's here. Hey, Gloria. Great to see you. Okay, everybody. That is, gosh, we are at 520. This has been a long one. Um, if you are interested in recording, I suggest you head on over to my YouTube channel, Play Guitar Academy, uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube forward slash Play Guitar Academy, and sign up there, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified when we do these things. I'm going to be doing a lot of cakewalk instructions, uh, a lot of guitar related recording things in the near future. And so uh, head on over there and we can get started with that. And that's going to call it for today. So that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. Also, I really appreciate it if you could leave a review for the show. If you're just starting or new to the guitar, head over to startheareguitar.com. Check out my premium 11-week beginner's course. It'll give you the foundation you need to move forward correctly on the guitar. Follow me on all my different social media pages. Links to them are at playguitaracademy.com. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next episode. Hey, everybody. I've, I'm going I'm to turn the recording off right now. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me today. I thought, I said, man, how? gosh, I hope I have enough for a podcast for this one today. And look, it's 522. We've, we've gone on. So there's a lot of good stuff in this one. I hope it helped. Brennan says, super helpfully, great episode. Thank you, Brennan. I appreciate that. Uh, and Chris said, nice one, Lee. Yeah, this is, a, this is kind of um, surface level. You know, the, the, I wish that when I started recording that I had a, a heads up of what the issues were going to be. It would have saved me a ton of time, a ton of time, and a ton of money, too that latency is an issue and, and, you know, hours and hours I'm trying to get, you know, everything to go. Um, so I, th I think this will help a lot of people and i really um, happy. Everybody was here to help me with it today. I, I like this version of the podcast, so I didn't really write everything out word for word. I just had a overall, um, outline for it and the chat actually, steered me in some different directions that I wouldn't have got if I had planned everything out ahead of time. So I think, I think this was really nice. And I like, in I, uh, you know, when we do the, um, the weekend stuff, I, um, really happy, uh, you know, taking a break and answering some questions and, and incorporating you guys into that. And then we come on Mon Monday and we do the podcast and I'm just kind of like, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, you know, I, I, I really kind of miss that. So I'm liking incorporating everything like that and seeing some friendly faces or at least friendly names in the chat <laughs> as we do this. But well, I'm going to go ahead and go everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Evan says, stay metal. You too, man, stay metal. And, um, Dean says, took two pages of notes. Great. That's good news. That's good. Good news. Um, and so thanks everybody. Thank you, Dean and Evan and the other Evan and the other Evan. We got a lot of Evans, uh, Chris and Gloria, Justin and Jake. And let's see here. If I'm missing, we have, uh, Kevin and Kenny was here and let's see here. Dean, um, Brennan. Coke was here early on. What did he say? It says going good, trying to get normalized with the kid. Yeah, Coke's got the the new the new baby. That's awesome, man. So, um, so I hope I got everybody who hung out and participated in the chat. I really appreciate it, and I I can't wait for this one to come out on Wednesday. I think it's going to be a really good one. And so everybody, stay safe, and I'm I will see everybody back here on Friday for guitar news. And I look forward to doing it. So see you soon. Bye-bye.